All right, just waiting for the uh, desktop. Transfer over. Okay, should be good now. All right, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. All right, everyone, thanks for showing up. Um, I want to thank Lightspeed and Alpha 7 for sponsoring this webinar. It's a crazy day today. Just uh, catching my breath. Um. <laughs> Yeah, the SPY bounced off that daily 15-period moving average today. Uh, you don't even want to know how much Facebook I own. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Today, I want to talk about scalping, tactical scalping methods on the Lightspeed platform. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Jay Yu, co-founder of UndergroundTrader.com. We've been around since 1998. Uh, voted Forbes Best of the Web for ha Hyperactive Traders uh, four years in a row. Uh, been published by Wiley, uh, McGraw Hill, Bloomberg. My latest book out is Way of the Trade. Uh, the Bible, which I thought was the Bible, was Trading Full Circle. And then <clears throat> with the advent of the high frequency trading programs, um, the all that out all those algorithm programs out there. Um, it occurred to me that you know the flaw lies in the execution. Okay? Rarely does the flaw lie in a solid game plan. It's the execution. And as you know, you can be right and still lose money in the markets, right? You can be right, you know, on the direction of the stock, and you take a position and it's going up. But what happens? The algos they come in or they rug pull those bids, and next thing you know, you stop out, and then the stock. What does it do? It reverts right back to the trend and continues to grind higher. So you may have been right in the setup, in the direction of, of the trend, but you still lost money. Okay. So because of that, I came out with way of the trade. It's the tactical applications, the tactical applications of the methods. Now, I want to just say that um, you know Alpha Seven Trading. They, you know, they came to me, and they gave me the freedom to put together a course that you know, I felt I could put everything into, everything into, and uh, and they went ahead and uh, you know kept you know pretty much put it all together. Okay, so um, without the seven trading, okay, these gentlemen they have basically the trading course, the dream trading course that I put together meticulously, meticulously. I'm talking about starting from starting from the basic building blocks from, from an atomic level. Okay? Let, let me get something straight. The problem that most traders have or most people who enter the stock market is they think that they can just you know, follow an alert. They can just piggyback in, on an alert or just jump in and jump out when someone tells you to jump in and jump out. Okay, you may make money for a while doing that, but let me tell you something. The market, the market is a cannibalistic beast, and it preys on its own. And the market will know. It will sniff out that hey, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. This guy is a mark. He is a mark. So he may get lucky on some trades, but we're going to stretch him. And when we stretch him, he's going to snap. So the only way you can defend defend yourself okay, is to learn a viable method. And there's lots of methods out there. All right, now I welcome you to go ahead and try them all. But the reality is, this is what I use. These are my methods, uh, along with Alpha 7 Trading. So anyway, Alpha 7 Trading, go ahead and register for a free course. At the end of the webinar, we're going to go over some uh, a special offer for the for the attendees tonight. And with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Um, with this webinar, what I want to do is I just want to go ahead straight into the application of the methods. All right. Um, for those of you who know me, I, I don't like to pitch stuff. I don't I don't want to spam you anything. Um, I'm a trader. All right. I'm a trader. I'm, I'm my head is spinning right now. Because I, you know, basically, as the spy was taking a collapse, 
Um, I got into 124,000 shares of Facebook, averaged at was it uh, 64.25? That's my average on 124,000 shares. Um, and what saved my ass was the spy. Once you break the five and you get a mini inverse pup, the rule is you're gonna da- you, your next target is that 15 period. And on that daily chart, the 15 period was uh, 194, right, right around 194.08, 194.10. So the moment we got near that, and then we bounced, okay, that beautiful reversion bounce, if you know ahead of time, hey, that's the bounce right there, okay, that's the law of a mini inverse pop. You break the five, your next target's the next bumper. That's at daily 15. And you'll notice how the SPY, let me just get my numbers straight. It's all a blur at this point. Um, You'll notice how the SPY today yeah, it, it was 193, 193.08, okay? Now, the low today was 193.11. That's close enough. But you see where the SPY closed at? 193.60, it's straight up 193.76. That's the mini puffs, okay? Those are the mini puffs. That's the rule. The rule is you break the 5, you tag the 15, you make the reversion back to the 5. That's what saved my ass today, okay? Unfortunately, you know, there was a, a bigger seller in front of me who wanted to unload it, uh, Every opportunity got at uh, 64.30. Now, 64 was a key breakout on Facebook yesterday, so I knew that was going to hold. It was that, that that had to hold, or it was my ASS. Anyway, so with uh, the last webinar, I went over the rifle charts and the usually utilizing the five and the one minute charts. Okay, um, today I'm going to add the 15 minute rifle charts. Now, refer to the last webinar for the rifle chart setups and all that stuff. All right. But so today I'm going to go over some tactical trades, some trade sequences. Um, and I know for a lot of you this may go over your heads, right? This may be too fast. That's what, hey, that's what the trading course is for. Um, we have a special intro, uh, intro course that we're give, uh, you know, have an offer on at the end of the webinar, okay? And that's to get your feet wet. But this all goes back. This all goes right on back to what I'm talking about. You can go to any newsletter or any subscription service. There's tons of them on Twitter, okay? And these guys are going to boast, oh, man, I made 9000 here, made 3000 here, made 4000 here. Okay? And that's all fine and dandy, but the reality is you're going to find, you jump into any of these services, you may make money for a while, but, man, if you have no clue, if you have no clue what the setup is, you're going to lose. Market will find you. It will eat you up. The market will expose your weaknesses, and then, like, a, a million maggots are going to infest on it, okay? That's just how the markets are. If you're not galvanized, if you're not galvanized and solidified with a, with, with, with a foundation, okay, it doesn't matter what money you think you've made in the markets, okay, that is just, that is just money waiting to be taken. And that's all I got to say about that. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, let me just say something. Okay, when you watch TV, when you watch CNBC or Bloomberg, and you see the Dow's up 100 points, okay, too many people, too many traders equate that with their performance. Oh well, oh man, the Dow's up 100 points, you know, and uh, you know, I'm I'm negative on the day. This is you know, what is this? Oh man, I really suck. I really suck. All right, and then what what happens? They get more desperate, and then they push harder. The market loves that, especially if if you're losing in the morning, and then by the afternoon the Dow's up 100 points. Well, the afternoon is where everything dries up. Okay, it's, everything dries up, and so what happens? You push harder, and what what do you find happening? You get chopped around even more. You get chopped around even more. So that little little amount of loss can turn into a big loss by the end of the day. What you have to understand is that the market, whenever you look at charts and setups in, in books and webinars, and they like to show you, hey, look at this chart, man. This is, You should have bought here and sold here, blah, blah, blah. Okay, That's only the tip of the iceberg. That's the full-blown transparency. And I love to use that iceberg theory because the reality is that, you know, when you look at an iceberg, 
and it's big, and it's a big chunk of ice, you know, it's floating on the water. Oh, wow, that's so huge. But the reality is only 20%, maybe 10 to 20% of that iceberg actually breaks the surface. Okay? The other 80 90% lurks under the water. So whenever you see these chart examples and these results and all that BS, understand, okay, that's the tip of the iceberg. That's what breaks water or it breaks the surface. Unless you're galvanized thoroughly, okay, with what lurks beneath that water, guess what? I got news for you. You're going to drown because bar none, the market's will expose your weaknesses. You can't put the cart in front of the horse, okay? And it is dead man walking. Any, you know, like you go to Twitter, any of these people are like, oh, man, I found your service. No, I, I you know, made my retirement. You're the best. You're the best. And if they have no clue why they're buying and selling, guess what? It is a matter of time. I've been around for 15 years. Okay? You have no idea. In 1999, 2000, when when stocks would move in 50 point, Amazon would move in a 50 point range, and Broadcom, SDLI, these are $400 stocks, 50 point range intraday. Okay, the accolades are nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. And you know what? I know. Okay, the people who didn't arm themselves, ultimately that money comes right back to the markets. That's just the way it works. The markets are a minus sum game. Don't ever think for a second you sign up for some newsletter service or a chat room, even my chat room, that if you just play the alerts, you can make a living off of it. That's naive. All right? Because you will lose. Ultimately, you're gonna you're gonna get hit hard. So the thing is, you've got to learn to fish. I know it's cliche, but you know what? It is a very true cliche. Now, going back to what I said, the wet versus the dry climates. Wet climates, and this is something you can't judge by how much the index is up or up or down. Okay? In fact, that's tip of the iceberg, guys. Okay? Oh, Dow's up 100 points. Great. What does that mean? Does that mean you should be making money? Dow's only 30 stocks. Okay? Spies up a dollar. Well, guess what? As far as the spy is concerned, especially with Apple moving now, you know, back close to the uh, mid 600 pre-split, you know, Apple's almost three, four, five percent of the uh, S and P, twenty percent of the QQQ. Well, around 700 or 100. It's around you know 20 percent of the Qs. Okay, then you got the financials. All they got to do is juice the banks, juice a couple of banks in the S and P, juice Apple, juice IBM. Okay, the, because these are these are uh, uh, market cap weighted indexes. So it only takes juicing a handful of stocks to lift the indexes. And then when that happens, well, as they say, a rising tide lifts all boats, right? So everything else should rise. But see, we're in a very strange market right now. We're in a very strange market where bonds are rising along with stocks. We're in a strange market where, well, I don't, you know, gold is on its, gold and oil, they, they're just doing their own thing. The correlations are so wacky here, all right? So it's easy to see the SPY up five points, the Dow up 120 points, okay? And then your stocks are all red because we're in that period of crazy correlation. But... All that aside, when we go to a microscopic level, okay, a level that truly matters, intraday, understand that the wet climate is fertile. The wet climate is robust. Stocks, stock prices move. The volume's heavy. You have momentum. You have follow through. And there's robust price movement. So you get a particular pattern at 9.45, and it makes a 50-cent move. You get that same pattern at 2 o'clock. At 3 o'clock, it may move a dime. You see what I'm saying? The wet versus dry. And the reality is this. It's the law of transparency. Okay? When the market opens up, it's fresh, it's new, everyone's cautious, it's lenient. 
And it's within that risk, quote, risk environment where you're going to make the most money, the most bang for your buck. You play it safe, 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 safe. But the, by the end of the day, you, you figure you got a handle on the stock. It's just what so does everybody else. And that's what makes a rigid climate. So then, in order to play these wet climates, how are you going to play? Are you going to wait for someone to give an alert or tell you to buy? Okay, I already said that is a that is a dead end street. You got to arm yourself. You got to arm yourself with methods. All right. So here's an example. Okay, this is a wet climate on Facebook. Look at the nice volume, volume, volume. Even though the volume is declining. Okay, we have our rifle charts. We have our five 15-minute moving average. I'm sorry, five 15-period moving averages on the five-minute chart. Upper Bollinger Bands, the stochastics, and notice the trend channel and the price appreciation. Okay, this is even though it's going down. It, oh my God, it's beautiful. It's a mini inverse puff. Beautiful range. Okay, it's from 60 what 70s all the way down you know, to to 50 what 59 60s. Okay, this is beautiful. This is fertile. This is tradable. I don't care if it's going up or down, as long as there's this beautiful, lovely range. Okay, me personally, I'm a reversion player, so I love this kind of stuff. Now, you you know, you don't want to play this volatility. You wait, you wait, you wait, you wait, wait. You finally lift your skirt and you say, "All right, now now's the time to play, man." Here's a mini pup. Let me jump in on this. Okay, look how tight that range is. You see what I'm saying? Okay, you in order to make the same money you would make here, okay, you may think that, hey, the range is tighter, okay, so my risk will be less. But the reality is if you, can, you, you can spend less capital, less ammo, because you have a fertile, wet climate trading this, and in order to make the same kind of money you would make here, okay, it's the opposite. Instead of playing less shares, you would have to play more shares because the channel is so much tighter. Okay, not to mention the volume has slipped off, so you got a lot of algos in there, and you're prone to chop. This is what you want to trade. This is what you want to avoid. Okay, this is what you use with your profits to, to mess around in if you want. So please understand that. This is very important. It's so important. I can't even tell you. Okay, you take a trader who's got no idea what he's doing. Put them in this market. Take a pro. Put them in this market. Okay. Give this guy a buy alert. Right. He's going to end up, well, with an easier ride. Okay. And likely make more money unless if you give him the same amount of capital. Now, an experienced trader is going to understand this range. So he's going to play the reversions with more size. Okay. But once again, liquidity also overrides price, and that's the one thing the trader has no control over. Okay. You play. 20,000 shares here, you're going to make just as much with less risk than 100,000 shares down here. I know. I know firsthand. So we're adding the 15-minute chart, okay, the 15-minute rifle chart. Once again, the rifle chart, we have our five 15-period moving averages that gives us the trend and the trend channel, the upper Bollinger Bands. Okay, the Bollinger Bands, they give us, they serve two purposes, all right? Oftentimes, they provide a target. Okay, uh, whenever we take longs uh, that have mini pumps, it provide a, a viable target. Okay, and the actual contraction or the expansion of the Bollinger Bands tells us whether it's a fertile environment or not, whether there's a trading channel to even consider playing. Now, this is our roadmap, our moving at our stochastics. That is our engine. Okay, so our engine basically tells us, hey. This is oversold with the crossover through the 20 band, makes your oscillation up, combine that with a pup formation right here, boom, you've got a beautiful setup. Now, this is the 15 minute chart. Using that in and of itself alone, that's not going to give you the entry signals, and that's what the five and the one minute charts are. They're a lot more specific. The one minute provides the, the fuse or the coil, the five minute gives the mid trend, and the 15 minute gives you the overall trend. So this is what this is part of the Doppler effect. So when we put them all together, we have our one-minute chart, we have our five-minute chart, and then we have our 15-minute chart. Okay. Now, you always start with that one-minute chart, get your feet wet, build a foundation, add the five-minute chart, 
Okay, and then when you get to that point where, oh man, this stuff's too tight, it's too tight, is there anything that could have given me a heads up? Okay, and when you discover, that, hey, there's a need for this, there's a need. Okay, I need a lead, I need something, because everything is too tight here. Is something going to give me the heads up on this five minute breakdown? Well, you know it's going to give you the heads up? There's a mini inverse pup on the 15, dude. That mini inverse pup is a dapper effect that tells you, whoa, okay, go ahead, use a one minute trigger, take the short, and you're Resistances, it's going to be your 5 minute 20, but then you look at your 15, you see that mini inverse pump, and you're like, wow, five period moving average, overlap resistance, I'll get more shares. And that's how you utilize a 15, 5, and 1 rifle chart. All right, I'm going to go over some trade sequences on May 22nd, 2014. I went ahead and pre recorded the audio for this, so I'm going to test to see if you guys can hear the audio okay. So you guys let me know. Oops, hold on. All right, guys, let me know if you can hear the audio okay. All right, we have CRM, Salesforce.com. It's been in an uptrend. You see the 15, 5, and 1 minute chart. Next to those, we have the SPY 5 and 1 minute. We short 1,000 shares of CRM at 5272. Uh, we notice that the 1 minute chart in the bottom right hand corner, you see how it slips the 80 band, so we're going in and shorting for a reversion. Now, on the 5 minute chart, we see the red candle. That's your counter candle. That's also an early sign of a market structure high. We short 2,000 more shares of CRM because we also notice on the SPY charts, the five and the one minute, uh, the five minute has a mini and burst pump, and the one minute's got a nice fresh 80 band slip. Now, sticky 250s is a 52, 60, 50, 40. So we also know and we're very aware that 52, 60 is not an easy break. But if that goes, then 52, 50, 52, 40, okay, those are the next levels that are going to hit, and those are very strong support areas. So right off the bat, with our shares short, 3,000 shares short, average 52.69, we also want to go ahead and start mapping out our exits here. All right? By, I know that if 52.60 breaks, it's going to have a quick knee-jerk overshoot. So we, we go ahead and place 1,000 shares of cover at 52.58. Okay, that's 1,000 shares. We still have 2,000 shares left. We go ahead and keep sprinkling out the bids, our limit bid orders. Now, look at that. 52.60 is overshooting right here. And if we look at the SPY, the SPY, one minute's coming down, five minutes got a mini inverse pump. We get filled at 52.58. CRM's coming down still. Notice the one minute mini inverse pump through the 20 band. Look how quick CRM's going down. We go ahead and cover another thousand shares at 52.54. And cover 500 more shares at 52.52. And then we go ahead and place a limit order at 52.46. Now, 52.50 is a very tough break. When they break it, or if they break it, they're going to overshoot it real quick. And the thing you have to be real careful about here are the reversions. Because if I were not short, and if they cut right through 52, 60, 50, and 40, that 5240 is where I'm looking for a reversion, a quick snapback reversion. Okay? So at this point, we want to ahead and go ahead and cover before a reversion kicks in. We'll cover the last 500 shares at 52, 52, uh, 50, and we're closed out. And that was a plan A reversion short. Uh, we had a 15-minute 15 15 gravestone doji, 5-minute market structure high, 1-minute mini inverse pup, SPY 5, 1-minute dual mini inverse pups. We shorted 3,000 shares average of 52.69 and covered 52.58, 54, 52.50, out 11 cents, 17 cents, 19 cents for a 4.45 profit. Okay, notice how, and once again, notice how CRM gets that little reversion spike right there. All right, so... Uh, you know, that's your simple plan A reversion short. Okay, we're shorting. Once we see any any um, cracks in the armor, that's where we want to go ahead and take advantage of it. And the wind was on our back because we had the five minute, which had a mini inverse pop, and the one minute had a nice eighty band cross down. Next up, we have Facebook, and we're buying Facebook. We're starting to accumulate Facebook here on a perfect storm breakout. We're up. We're in a uh, three thousand. 4,000 shares long at 61.07. Uh, we noticed 15 minutes got a pup, 5 minutes got a uh, mini pup, and the 1 minute's got a mi uh, pup breakout. We're already placing the orders to sell starting from 
And like I said, this is a perfect storm breakout, and you always have to prepare with Facebook. You've got to put your orders in ahead of time. So we went ahead and dumped, or uh, our limit orders got filled, 61.17.18, and then we sold 61.14. Now, we still have 1,000 shares left. Look at the SPY. We notice that on the SPY, the one minute has a puff as well. Facebook pretty much mirrors the, uh, the SPY. Um, and Facebook tagged the five-minute upper Bollinger Bands on that spike. Now, if you know Facebook, Facebook tends to get reversions right when they overshoot near that 6118 or the 18 by 22 area. Okay? Um, so once Facebook tagged that five-minute upper Bollinger Bands, we're looking for a reversion back down. And you notice on the one-minute stock assets on the bottom right-hand chart, uh, you notice how it's been riding above that 80 band or at the 80 band for, for quite, quite, a, quite a period of time, almost 20 minutes. So whenever you have an extended one minute riding above the 80 band, you're always looking for some type of a, a reversion that's going to set in. So we're still long 1,000 shares of 6108. However, we, we, we now have an opportunity to replenish, replenish, replenish our position. And so what I'm thinking is, all right, let the one minute make its oscillation down on not only Facebook, but look at the SPY. The SPY, one minute, is making a mini inverse pop. 15-minute, five-period moving average supports at 60.97. Even though the five-minute is still in a nice, steady grind to the upside, that one minute is going to take a priority, especially if, if once again, it's correlated with the one-minute SPY, which is making a mini inverse pop. So on Facebook, I already know that 61, um, uh, what is it, 61, 60.98 is actually a pivot area, so it's going to find some support there. Uh, so what we want to do is go ahead and place our orders around that area so that we can we can basically place our fish hooks, okay, and let Facebook come to us. And we want to sprinkle the orders around. Now, you'll notice on my limit orders, I placed them around 61.02, 61.01. I also threw some sell orders in there since we still have a thousand shares at 61.22 and 61.21, um, and then more buy orders, 500 shares, 60.99, 60.98. Now look how the one minute is making a mini inverse puff slip on Facebook. See how Facebook's coming down now? 61.03 by 61.05, 61.03, 61.03 bid. Okay, so Facebook's trying to come down here. The one minute's got a mini inverse puff. Now you might say, well, Jay, why don't you just get in at 61.05? But well, see, it's not so much the matter of pricing, okay? What it is is, is the matter of the stochastics. And the one-minute stochastics, it's still around that 60 band. So when you have a mini inverse pump, most of the times you're going to get that oscillation to the 20 band. The question is, where is that price going to be at the 20 band? Now, we we actually got filled 500 shares at 6102, okay? So that brings our average cost down to 6106 now on 1,500 shares. We still have orders out there on Facebook to get filled. Now, notice how Facebook, the one minute, is now making its way down to the 30 bands. Notice Facebook, 6102 by 6103, 61 by 6101. We got filled 500 to 6101. And notice something, guys. Okay, this is the point where longs start to panic. Okay, anyone who chased Facebook at 6115 or 6117, well, they chased it without knowing Hey, 61, 18 to 22, that's usually going to be a re re reversion area. It's also five and upper Bollinger Bands. So this is where they're shaking out the longs in Facebook. And that's where I'm scooping it up. We're scooping up the sellers. And the one-minute mini inverse puff gives us a heads up that Facebook is coming down. So now all we got to do is sit back and wait for Facebook to come down. Notice on the 15-minute chart, the 15-minute five-period moving average has now moved up to about 60 60, what, 6101, 6098. So we're right at the 15-minute pop support area. So what we're doing is we're just simply scooping those shares back up as the sellers come in and panic out. So now I'm filled on 3,500 total shares. Now I just got filled on another, the final 500 at 6096, that brings my average down to 6101 on 4,000 shares. Now, notice immediately what I did. I went ahead and put in limit orders for 1,000 shares sell orders at 6108, 6107, and 6111. Okay, because now the one minute stock gas is at a low is at a low band. Okay, and it, and if I had any more buying power, I'd be buying up more Facebook shares right here. 
Because once again, if you know Facebook, okay, you know that at 60, 90 is a coil support. It rarely overshoots that in one swoop. Plus, like I said, I get the 15 minute fire support and a pivot right around that 60, 98 area. So at this point, what we're waiting on now is simply the one minute low band to cross up. And the moment that one minute low band cross up, that's when the HFTs and the, the uh, volume participation programs, the algorithms, they'll kick right in. All right, they'll kick right in. Look at that. Look at that. One minute trying to coil. Look how quickly the bids start to pile and the ask evaporates. Okay, look at that. 6106, 6107. 6108, bam, bam. God filled it 6106 for 1,000 shares. Filled 1,000 shares 6108. Now I'm looking for 6109, my 6109 limit order to get filled. God filled on 6109. Sold 500 at 6108. Only have 500 shares left. Average price on that is at 1696. And Facebook, one minute, is just starting to make the cross back to the upside. But see, I always want to catch that nice, fat reversion pop, that first or the uh, first two big green candle pops like you see on that one-minute chart. Now, I went ahead and sold the final 500 shares out at 6,101 because Facebook starts to peter out. So this is what we call a perfect storm for us. I caught the tail end of a perfect storm on the initial long scalp, 3,000 shares, at 6,107. That's just plain getting in and getting out into the buyers, 6,117, 14, all right, uh, for out ten, uh, a dime, 11 cents, and 7 cents. And then with 1,000 still left in the chamber, we went ahead and we reloaded 3,000 more shares on the bids okay, as Facebook made a reversion on a one-minute mini and first pop slip. If I wasn't long Facebook, okay, I could have gone short Facebook. All right, but however, I'm playing to the long side because 15 minutes got a pop breakout. So we go ahead and we put in those limit orders, as you can see, and we got flow from 61.02 to 60.96 to reload a full 4,000 shares Facebook average at 61.01, and we clip those out at 61.06, 08, 09, 08, and 61.01 for a total of $506 profit. All right, inside of pretty much inside of uh, 15 minutes. That's how you play Facebook. Uh, as a seasoned trader, we need to know the stock. You've got to really specialize in it, but that's how it can be done. Thank you, Jay. Great explanation. <laughs> All right, so a lot of this stuff may, once again, may go over your heads. Okay? <clears throat> the purpose of this webinar is not to explain every little thing to you. Uh, that's what the trading course is for. Just to give you a quick rundown, okay, CRM, this is, once again, this is just tactical scalping. And as you saw, as you saw, the money, money can be made, okay? And for the most part, it's accurate. Now, if you're trading 50,000 shares of Facebook and trying to unload, you know, 25,000 share blocks, that's going to impact the liquidity. But, you know, five, 10,000 shares, you know, in one 2K, 2K, uh, trades, that's not going to affect anything. Okay, um, it's a whole different ball game once you get up to large size. But that's that's a whole, like I said, it's a whole different ball game. Okay, most important thing is you've got to build your foundation. You know, um, with that Facebook example, I mean, you're talking about a fifteen to twenty cent range. All right, for maybe most people, that's not even worth their time. And you know why? Because maybe they're playing 100 shares or 500 shares. They figure, oh man, it's not worth the, it's not worth all my effort. Okay. But see, the goal is, the goal is to get your probability and your win rate up, so that you can scale in more size. The money comes, guys. The money comes from the size. Okay. I'm not going to ever sit and wait for a one point move in Facebook. Because the reality is, Facebook doesn't pop one point. Facebook's going to move. And, uh, well, depending on the way, if it's a wet climb, it's going to move a nice 15, 30 cents, okay, fast with liquidity. And then as it thins out, as the day gets on, it may get stuck in a 20 cent range for a while, okay, your spikes are going to be maybe 9 to 11 cents, all right. But I tell you what, you know, if, you're, if you know how to play 50,000 shares of Facebook, that 20 cent range, you can make a lot of money, okay. But you got to start small. Um, you know, trying to explain this, 
trying to explain this to, to the average humanoid, it's, there's no purpose, there's no point, all right? Those of you who are attending this webinar today, I hope that you can understand that the market, the, there is money in the markets. And let me also get something straight here, okay? Uh, everybody talks about the HFT programs, and now it's like a popular thing to jump on the bandwagon and say, oh, yeah, they're not fair, they're not fair. Okay, that was three years ago, guys. <laughs> three years ago, the HFT programs, they were spoofing those bids and asks, okay, and they weren't providing any liquidity. All right, now they got no point where these, these programs are so desperate, they're going through headlines, okay? And let me tell you something, no matter how many millions of lines of code is out there, the reality is it's still programmed by humanoids, by earthlings. And a lot of these times, the only advantage H HFT programs have is capital, okay, and uh, speed. And that's already been neutralized because the moment you get another HFT program that does the same thing, what happens to that HFT program's edge? Right. Now, combine them with 100 HFT programs. You see what I'm saying? So then, next thing you know, no HFT program has a real advantage, do they? Okay. Who has the advantage? Well, you can say market makers, specialists, they're a dying breed, but they have one market. They have one edge, and that's called order flow. Okay. Now, they're not supposed to front run this order flow, Okay. but, you know, hey, I'm not going to say they don't do it, but let me tell you something, they probably do. All right. So the playing field has evened out. Okay. The playing field has evened out. You, you know what it boils down to? Once again, okay, your abilities, which can only truly, your abilities can only truly be used once you build a foundation, once you've got a galvanized foundation to know where to pipeline, which pipeline to, 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 to make your efforts into. Right? And the more, the more uh, you know, entrants get into the education business, you know, education in the stock market and all this stuff, all this more newsletters, more chat rooms and stuff like that, okay? The reality is people are just following this. Everyone wants to be able to buy when someone says buy and sell when someone says sell. And you know why? Because humanoids, okay, by nature, want convenience. They are lazy, for, back of a, for lack of a better word. Okay, they're lazy. And so after these uh, trade sequences, many of you may see, hey, $950 in profits in under 30 minutes, that's great. That's the tip of the iceberg. That's what's transparent, law of transparency. But the reality is you're going to have to learn all this stuff underneath. Okay? You're going to have to familiarize yourself with trade sequences, with uh, the actual stocks, with... Uh, particular setups, plan A, plan B, market structure highs, market structure lows, think two fifties, blah, 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 season correlation, divergence, five one minute rifle charts, fifteen minute rifle charts, correlation with the spy, be able to gauge the wet and dry climates. All that stuff. Okay? Now, it sounds complicated. And let me tell you something. If you if you try to digest it all at once, it is. And that's what the problem was with training. You know, giving people too much all at once. And that's why, like I said, with Alpha 7 Trading, I put myself down, started on an atomic level, on an atomic level, the most basic building blocks. And we work off of each atomic level, and then that atom becomes a molecule. That molecule becomes, uh, I don't know, a, you know, a piece of stone. You know, that stone turns into a little piece of iron. You galvanize, 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 and you build the foundation, okay, from the depths of the ocean, and you build it, and you build it, and you build it. And then when you break ground, when you break water, okay, that's when you've got all this down here. And this is simply a byproduct. Okay? Profits? Profits, what, what are those? A byproduct of what? The process. Okay? That's what it boils down to. So, there's your free trading course. Register for alpha7trading.com. Um, like I said, okay, the trading, the, the trading courses that are put together by me, by hand, meticulously, along with Alpha 7, they start from an atomic level, and it, they work 
themselves up. Um, so that's it. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this webinar up. Uh, I want to thank everybody for attending. Mike, if you have any uh, anything to add to that, that'd be great. Um, visit alpha7trading.com. They register for some free trading courses, and then uh, at that point, with, from that point forward, okay, um, take the quick start, and then the the, the other four levels. All righty. Now, if you got, since we have some time, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. But I just need to be able to pull up the uh, chat room for questions. Oh boy. Okay. Anyways, um, all right. So anyway, contact alpha7trading.com, and I thank you all for attending the webinar. And good trading. Thanks, Jay. Uh, that was great. I uh, learned a lot here. I, I think everyone did too. Um, this webinar will be available on the website. It probably will be up for next week, so definitely go to lightspeed.com, the webinar section, to find it, and um, you certainly will be able to replay it there. I want to thank everyone for attending. I want to thank Jay for that great presentation and explanations of some valuable information. And I hope everyone will look out for some future webinars. We'll have some more posted on the website soon. So just keep an eye out for that. So everyone have a great night. I hope everyone